welcome back to another video today we are going to be talking about my way and tips and tricks on how to edit facial textures using the photo editing software gimp that was a mouthful huge few disclaimers beforehand this stuff that i'm about to show you carries through almost all photo editing softwares since the stuff i'm about to show you is like basic level art stuff like it's it's nothing fancy it's nothing like crazy out there and it's kind of just like bare minimum for all photo ed editing softwares but that does not mean that i know where these settings are in everything else but gimp please keep that in mind. Second, I am not a professional. I'm sure that's very clear. I am nowhere near being a professional. I have done digital and graphics art for very many years. That is where my experience comes from. Without further ado, let us get into it. Now, we need to go over the most important rule before we get into anything. The most important rule I can tell you, always create a new layer. Why is this going to be important? You'll find out later in the video, but please, for the love of God, for so many different reasons, everything that you're going to do, do it on a new layer. You're, you're editing some blush, do it on another layer. You're adding eyebrows, do it on another layer. Do not do this on one, two, three layers. You should have a kajillion layers. It sucks, it really does, but it helps. How we're going to do that is we are going to the right hand bottom side of the screen, right click, and then click new layer. It should be applied to normal. You can name your layer for the sake of like freckles, eyebrows, eyeshadow, eyeliner, name it whatever you want, and then hit OK. What does a new layer do? Well, to get into it, a new layer is going to be above the original layer. So imagine you're taking a bunch of clear film sheets. And the bottom, the bottom sheet is your bottom layer. Adding another clear film sheet on top, you can draw on it, you can do whatever you want, and if you erase it, well, you're not affecting the bottom layer. And you're applying it over and over and over. So your bottom layer is going to be at the bottom, and everything above that is going to layer over top of it. That is going to become very important for specific things you might want to do later down the line. And just in general, if you're wanting to move things, adjust things, shift things, you're not shifting the entire canvas. You're only editing that one part. So if I can demonstrate here, let me do a quick line, let me do a quick erase, and bam, it's on a completely separate layer. It's not on the first layer, it's on a separate layer that isn't going to get affect the main layer. Now. Without, you know, getting too much more into this specific rule, let's get into the basics. The first, tool the first two tools, which are obvious to almost everybody, is the color picker tool and the brush tool. The color picker tool, when it comes to face textures, is what I specifically use when I want to go back onto a specific color, although I specifically save hex codes. Hex codes are a code given to a specific color that is universal. Meaning that if I found a hex code online of a color, I could place it in the HTML notation and gain that exact same color. But for color picking tools, I specifically do it for skin. So if I see a blemish in the skin that I want to change, I'll color pick it and I'll go and cover over it. And bam, now it's gone. Obviously, you know, it can be a little bit off since skin is highly detailed and gradient. But that is one of the many tools that I use. Second tool is obviously the brush. It is what we're going to need to do absolutely anything on this facial texture. Now, a few things about the brush. It has different um, brushes that you can use. I use the Hardness 025 brush, which is the most common brush at this point. But for things such as freckles, you can use Bristles 02. And, you know, it creates nice little dots for you. It gives you texture. Now, another little trick and tip you can use. I'm doing this very messily. It is not perfect. Let's say these are too bright. The opacity layer, I can change the opacity of a single layer to be lighter or darker. Now, that comes very in handy and is also another reason why you should keep everything on a separate layer. Because if I was to change the opacity of everything on a single layer, it doesn't work the same. Now... Next thing is the most important tool, aside from the, the new layer tool, 
is the smooth stroke tool. Now what the smooth stroke tool is, is a stabilizer. Drawing with the mouse and for people who don't have fancy designer graphics tablets is really hard to get a straight line or even a smooth curve. Even with designer tablets, people do use this a lot. If not, it is the most common tool used in graphics design. So when it comes to it, you are going to scroll down slightly and click on smooth stroke. The quality is the quality of the line itself. I have that up to 100% because 100% quality is where I want to be. Now the weight is the amount the brush trails behind your initial stroke. So my initial stroke is where the circle is and the brush is what's trailing behind. Now with smooth stroke, it's going to add weight to that so I know exactly and can direct the brush exactly where it's going to go. The faster you go, the less weight is going to be applied because you're pulling forcefully, but the slower you go, the smoother it can be. So this is with smooth stroke, and I'm going to attempt this without. That is without smooth stroke. In ret you know, to this, maybe it's a small difference, but on top of a texture on an avatar, it makes a huge difference when things aren't smooth, especially if you're like me and have that slight bit of like meticulous picking at it and being like, mm, well, that's slightly off. This is your best friend as a tool. And obviously I haven't told you guys this yet, but control Z universal undo button, best friend. Now the second one that we're going to talk about, the second most important tool when it comes to facial textures is the symmetry tool, the mirror tool. As you can see, both of these are perfectly symmetrical. And when it comes to VR chat avatars, everything is symmetrical. And we want to have that same effect for specific things such as eyeliner or one design we have on one side, we want to repeat itself on another side. To get the symmetry tool, we are going to click Windows, Dockable Dialogues, and then go down to Symmetry Painting. That's going to pull out on the right hand side a little tab here. Now for that, we are going to click Symmetry where it says None and then click Mirror. Nothing is shown up yet, but that is a-okay. We are going to put either a vertical or a horizontal symmetry depending on what you want. And we are going to drag this little bar here, vertical axis position, as close to the nose as we can. Control scroll is zoom in. And then we are going to click this little arrow behind it to measure up as close as we can to the center of the nose. Now, what that's going to allow us to do is that whatever we do on one side is instantly going to be done on the next. So let's say I'm going to do a fail attempt of eyeliner, but let's just say it's really fancy. Our eyeliner is perfectly symmetrical. Now, Next thing is next, is the unified transform. Another reason why having a second layer is so important is, or everything on a second layer. So let's say, let's, let's do something here. I drew a little heart, right? And it's like, a, it's, let's just say it was a perfect heart. Well, now I'm gonna have to make it, s okay. Let's say this was a perfect heart. Obviously it's not, but for, you know, the sake of the video, let's say this was a perfect heart. And I'm like, wow. I have it in the wrong place and how in God's name do I move that expand it shrink it everything there's this little tool on the top layer at the very end and it's called unified transform if you right click there is a bunch of things that you can do here but I unified transform is the one we can do since it is on a separate layer I can move this around without losing quality and have it anywhere that I want so if I move it here bam now it's here now with this, I can also shrink it, I can also rotate it, and I can position it anywhere that I want it to be. I can shrink it, move it up here, transform, bam. If this was merged on the same layer as the head, I would be moving around the entire texture and it would just be stuck where I left it. Now, another important tool. Is it necessary? Absolutely not, but it is definitely a tool that I specifically use when it comes to uh, um, getting things symmetrical because the mirror tool doesn't always cut it or sometimes I'm silly and I make mistakes. Or if I do something on one side and I want to simply new layer, I can duplicate layer and then I want to move it 
my apologies and I want to move it to the other side but I want it to be perfectly lined up to where it is on one side I use something called the ruler tool now if you look off to the top and the left hand side you see these two rulers that have a bunch of numbers on it if I actually click and hold I can pull out rulers and what that's going to allow me to do is make markers on specific points of the face now this is more of a like you know if you're nitpicky with things like i am this ruler tool is a godsend but it also helps with finding things being per perfectly symmetrical when the mirror tool isn't cutting it so now i can go to the sides of the eyes and would you look at that now i can measure up the bottom of the heart so this is where i want the bottom of the heart this is where i want the top of the heart and it's just easy peasy to use and move things around the next thing I'm going to be using is a lot of people understand, like, there's two ways of getting, like, a smooth line, all right? First way is using our brush tool, going bam, then using our blur tool and going to the edges and blurring. It doesn't give us that effect that we want, right? It's, it's, it's blurry, but it's not that airbrushed effect. GIMP does have an airbrush, it's just a little hidden. Going to our paintbrush tool, we're going to right-click it and then click airbrush. Now what that allows us to do is to have those airbrushed lines. There's things like force that we can pull down to release force from it, hardness even. H increasing the hardness increases the amount of pressure put onto it, but it's things that are very, very, very helpful when it comes to editing textures. Now, aside from the blur tool, the airbrush tool, and everything else that I showed you, there is also the lasso tool. So let's say this was attached to something or there was something near it and I just wanted to take this specific part. The lasso tool allows me to select a specific part of the face. So I'm selecting it. I'm on the wrong layer. I'm selecting the specific part of the face until this little dotted line goes around. Hit control V. I created this on a new layer. Hit new layer. And now, using the Unified Transform, I have specifically duplicated this little heart. It is the most easiest tools that I can show you when it comes to editing facial textures or beginning to edit facial textures. I really hope this helped, and I hope this sparked some creativity. Have a great day.